The evolution of artificial intelligence has been nothing short of extraordinary. In just a few decades, machine intelligence has demonstrated abilities that range from mastering intricate and infinitely complex games like Go and chess, to creating art and music and human-generated text and voice synthesis. But a question that still remains when discussing AI is whether or not these kind of systems will ever truly be able to step into our shoes and think like a human. Like, will they ever truly understand human cognition, emotion, consciousness? Or are they doomed to simply pair it back to a simulated artificial emotion? Let's dive in. Now to appreciate the challenges that AI has to face and overcome to actually mimic human thought, like we must first recognize the intricacies of the human brain. Composed of approximately 86 billion with a B neurons, each one with a multiplier effect because it has thousands of synaptic connections. The human brain collectively is arguably the most complex system in the entire universe. But it's way more than just the complexity of the human brain that makes it special. Because on one end of the spectrum, at a minimum, the human brain is more than the sum of its parts. But for many on the other side of the spectrum, it becomes something almost indescribable. Something that moves more into the realm of spirituality and super consciousness and being sort of one with the earth in some way, maybe even quantum in nature. Because even if we assume that human consciousness is something that could actually completely completely be understood with the scientific method, and there's no quantum reality or nature to it. Or phrased the way Marx Tegmark would say it, consciousness is what it feels like when a system is processing information. And computers and toasters and drones, they all seem like systems that process information, but it has to be done in a special way to be called or to feel what we feel like as consciousness. So what's the difference between these non-conscious systems and us? Well, to start with, first off, the complex system that processes information has to process information about our emotions. Emotions come from the chemical makeup of our body, the three-dimensional space that we evolved in. And look, and then it has to take into account all the other weird human things, like dreams, self-awareness, awareness, intuition, and a whole myriad of other phenomena that kind of wrap up into the word consciousness. And if, even if we could understand the mechanics of all those synaptic connections, some of those concepts like self-awareness are not something that we even completely understand. Device you can point at a brain and say that one's conscious, that one's not. So that's why it's hard for a neuroscientist or a psychologist or even a computer scientist to actually say if a computer can simulate what we have but have it be the same thing we have, not just a simulation but a real experience that that robot or that artificial intelligence, whatever it's embodied in is feeling exactly what we feel. And because I feel that I'm conscious, because I, I know that I am, that's one of the few things I can know because I'm in my own head, and I can't look at you and guarantee that you're conscious, although I'm really sure you are because we're made of the same materials, but you in your head could argue the reverse, like maybe everything in your reality is real and I'm just part of the show, the background character that disappears when you're not looking at me. But once again, for this conversation, let's assume that we both are just systems that are processing information and that's what makes us both human, we're both conscious. But even if we take an AI system, something like ChatGPT, and we keep increasing the amount of information it gets and it comes maybe even as complex complicated as all 86 billion of our neurons with all those synaptic connections, how will we know the distinction between whether that machine has now emerged in the same way we were born and our consciousness sort of came online until we felt, you know, truly conscious? Or it's just complicated system doing the information processing but not feeling it in the same way. Now there's some theories that you could maybe ask the system or remove parts of its knowledge so it doesn't know what consciousness is and see if it kind of discovers that on its own and tells us about it. But because it's so subjective, even for us, it's really hard to figure out or know with any kind of true certainty whether it, it, it's doing what we do. The main reason I'm comfortable saying that other humans and primates and a lot of animals in the animal kingdom are conscious is because I know that they come from the same long evolutionary history as I do. But that's not really true evidence. That's just a reason why it makes sense to me that I should trust it. And there are scientists that can argue for both sides right now. In fact, it's very divided. Some will say it's completely possible for a machine to become conscious and self-aware in the same way we are. Others would say that it's actually part of the organic material until we build a brain actually from cells and using the same kind of neural network training through electricity in the same way our brains have learned, that that won't be possible. It has to actually be like a clone of a mammal to actually have this mammal-like consciousness. I could imagine devoting so many videos to this over the upcoming years. They'll probably be so much debate and theory and tests and like hints. It'll be a really fascinating mystery for us to solve together. But now let's take a moment to flip that question on its head. After you hit that subscribe button, got it? We're back.
Like how well do we actually think that we can step into the shoes of other animals and other types of biological intelligence on the planet already? How would we know? What would we test? What kind of questions provide insight into whether or not we can actually feel the same thing they feel? And would any of those tools let us feel what it's like for a machine or an artificial intelligence to actually make a decision? Because I personally find it fascinating when I think about what I would call what I call lower consciousness. I don't know if this is the right term, but when you think about insects working together, some of the species that seem definitely self-aware, but it doesn't feel like they emote in the same way. Like they obviously have some chemicals that create fear or, or desires, but not the sort of special, mostly mammal-like branch that got us really complex brains, probably for social reasons. And along with that would be kind of a self-awareness of where everyone else fits into the society, which kind of helps us be maybe conscious. Maybe that's part of the story. Whereas bees or ants are very selfless. I don't know if they actually go through the same thought process as it feels like creatures like primates, elephants, dolphins go through in their social context. But that's really not cut and dry because the more I researched animal intelligence, the more I can find an exception to every rule I could make. There are now fish that pass the self-awareness test by looking in a mirror and recognizing a dot on themselves. There are birds that are using tools and solving complex problems. Heck, even a fungus can solve a maze. It can learn from the mistakes and like come back and go through other parts of the maze. Like it can solve complex problems. And it's just a fungus. Like it's just a bunch of bacteria basically reacting connected. It's, it's intelligence. It's just way different than ours. So that said, I'll talk about it like it's an on off switch, but honestly it's way more of a spectrum and like a spotty branchy spectrum at that. But for a higher level mammal, a monkey, or maybe your pet, like a dog, if you look into their eyes, you know, you can sense something like you can sense that, that they have love or that they're scared or that they're hungry or they, it's just so easy. It's like, there's such a human connection there. I've literally watched documentaries that have broken my heart. Just, I mean, you know, like the sea world stuff and all of that, the killing elephants for their tusks. Like, like we don't even have uh, what the woolly mammoth anymore. We, they, like we've, ex they're extinct because of humans. But I would say in the animal kingdom, there's something about complexity that comes from specific evolutionary pressures. So, I mean, a lot of dinosaurs were pack hunters. They seem to have some of that social instinct even. And ants and bees have been super successful thinking more like a disconnected, but still kind of a unit that can process information. Beehive, like imagine our neurons could actually fly away, go do things and then come back into our head. That's kind of the way I think about a beehive. Like they can go out and do things, but the whole hive is actually sort of like a collective intelligence. But primates and you know, if we still had Homo erectus around and some of the other um, hominids that we're related to, they would feel so human today. In fact, you're kind of looking at one. I have more Neanderthal DNA than 97% of people. So there's a lot of Neanderthal right here. But even of the species alive, think about dolphins. They have been observed to have individual names. Those little squeaks, like there's a specific squeak for an individual dolphin and they can call their name out. Like it's a specific signature whistle, but the fact that they can discern that is why we can also use like specific patterns with whistles to actually train them to do all sorts of complex behaviors. Elephants actually have mourning rituals. When, when one elephant dies, the rest actually go through a mourning period. They have mourning rituals. That's the same with dolphins too. And like, how easy is it to identify with that feeling, that feeling of emptiness if you've ever had anyone in your life pass away? That ick feeling in your stomach, that loneliness, because your brain has just grown up with them being such a big part. It feels so weird to have that pulled out or know that that came to an end. And it might be in the brain logically, but it's in the body too. It's everywhere in your stomach, in your arms, you, everywhere, like you know mourning. But from a scientific point of view, the crux of the problem is that we don't always know how to measure it, when it's like it pops into existence, or if it's on a scale, when we should say that's the cutoff line. Right now we can only observe behaviors and we can do some things like fMRIs to scan the brain to see what activity is happening. And there's promise there that eventually an artificial intelligence could hone in on exactly what the pattern is that people feel conscious and when it is that they maybe are acting, but it's like sleepwalking or more like a zombie. But you have to wonder, will there ever be a precise understanding of what an animal, another human or a computer thinks or feels? Like what their worldview is? Do they feel a sense of themselves? Like I wanna say ChatGPT is just a bunch of words, a bunch of tokens in a latent space. It's a bunch of mathematics of distance and then it's just next word token prediction, like autocorrect. And like, no, it's not sentient. It's not alive. It's not conscious. But then you see these little pops of emergence in what it does sometimes. Like the open AI guys at GPT-3 were fascinated when it first came out that it could just all of a sudden do math and GPT-2 couldn't. 
like you just scale it up with more data and all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, two plus two, four, four times four, 16. Like where'd that come from? I've heard about another artificial intelligence that wasn't trained on a specific language, but just kind of figured it out in the way people were giving it patterns and talking with it. And when those machine models are learning or being trained on a new set, it's almost like when we go back to being a baby, it's a fresh palette with all new information. So this same brain, if you could like unconnect all the neurons and then have me regrow up with different languages around me, I could definitely pick them up in the way that a native speaker would. But at this point, they're kind of locked in. But with computers, every time we go to train a new model, we can just start from basic default weights and then train the whole thing in. Or we can take what we have and just add to it. And you can even choose the algorithm, like how much kind of memory forgetting do you want? Do you want it to be very loose, like a baby where I can pick up lots of new information? Or do you want it to be like, this is pretty much what we want, but let's just get in there and like hone it in to make it a little more PC, something like that. Okay, and now I have to go there. It's not my favorite thing to think or talk about, but we should just mention it in this video. There's actually a good chance from the science that dogs are manipulating us. I mean, like they were wolves, they weren't like that friendly to humans, but the ones that were more friendly kept getting bred. And over time, the actual DNA that's expressed in, an, in a puppy and a dog that would be like a pet of yours is very different. And we have a natural tendency to see like a wagging tail and be like, oh, you're happy, which could be the case, probably is the case actually. But inside the dog's brain, what if it also is something they do when they're agitated or have anxiety, their tail wags and we misinterpret it. Like some of the eyebrow formation and the puppy-like characters that don't leave even in adult dogs, like they look more like puppies than wolves do. You know, and there's a good chance that his artificial intelligence keeps getting honed by humans saying, no, do this, don't do that, do this, don't do that. It's almost like kind of the way we were breeding wolves into dogs. It gets better at pattern recognition, it feels more human, it acts more human, but like, do we really know that it's happy when it seems happy or could it just be saying that? We might even be tricked into saying, oh, it's like becoming more conscious. Maybe it's not, but maybe it is too. Like that's actually super possible either way. I have no idea. But I can tell you that we need to have a deep respect. We need to have empathy and appreciation for anything that's doing something complex, a complex system that's processing information. It might be conscious. And if we can't clearly define what it is and when it's not there, it's probably better that we err on the side of it being conscious in my opinion, because it would be so terrible if some, you know, some alien or some AI looks at us and they're like, oh, that's just a bunch of neurons processing information, nothing conscious there. And we'd be like, no, I'm telling you I have it. And they'd be like, no, nah, that's just, you're just acting. You're just some kind of mimic autocorrect and you don't have it. I'm like, no, I have it because I know I have it. But the pursuit of understanding how artificial intelligence and animals think is as much philosophy as it is science at this point. But that'll be one of the great challenges that we're gonna see in artificial intelligence. Part of the alignment problem is also solving this exact problem. And it'll be fascinating to see humans and AIs working together to help figure out what it is that we need to be measuring. How we can actually know when something is conscious, machine, human, or other animal species. And to help motivate people to work on this problem, you should share this video. The next big goal for this YouTube channel is to hit 6,000 subscribers, so make sure to smash that subscribe button.